Welcome back everyone. Now since we've seen you last, we have been busy. Not that you would notice though, because all we've been doing is prepping Big Red, so hopefully we can get her painted this week. So we've got to pray for some nice weather. Now, before we get started, I think we should address the elephant in the room. What do we think? Not bad, eh? Not bad. Better than Jess's bowl cut, but it did cost me 15 quid mine, so not impressed with that. But let's get on with the first job. So even though the body is galvanised and it's pretty solid all over, there is a couple of bits of rust on it, and strangely, on the doors. So come down here and I'll show you. So we've got this bit down here on this side, and then on the other side, you've got the same bit of rust down here, and then also there's a bit up here as well. Now why it's rotten there, I'll never know, but I've got to get that cut out and all plate it up. And you might have noticed that the old general's on camera duty, and that's because she reckons that she can't leave me unattended again. I've got no idea why though, have you? I don't think that anybody is wondering why, and in addition to not being able to be left alone, I have also revoked his credit card rights. And to all of you in the comments that are like, oh, well done, John, you only bent the rules, you didn't break him. Keep it up, and I'll break you. So I've got all that cut out and welded up. Now, if you've never done anything like this before, rust is a bit like an iceberg. You only see just a little bit of it. And it's only until you get into it and start cutting it away as you see the, the full damage, really. But you have to cut as much out as you can and then get right back to pure metal before you start welding up. Otherwise, it's just going to get worse. And then the other side, luckily enough, this bottom bit didn't need cutting right out. It was just surface rust. So I ground that right back to bare metal. So we just need to paint that up and fill it up a little bit. And then this top bit was a bit of a nightmare. That just kept going and going, that did. So I've got all that cut out. It's not the prettiest looking at the minute, but again, by the time I get some body filler in there and shape it, it'll be as good as new. And whilst John was doing that, I've just got all the loose paint off in the back here, and I'm doing it up with some red primer, which should keep it nice and protected and rust free for lots of years to come. And my next step in the paint prep process, try and say that fast, is I'm going to take any kind of seal or black plastic or anything off that we don't want to paint that I can possibly get off. And that's one of the good things about these beauty old girls because it looks like it's just four bolts and the window's out. Who wants modern Fandango stuff, eh? So I've had quite a lot of comments about the roller shutters. I've had a lot of people saying I've got to keep them and I've got a lot of people saying I've got to get rid of them. So I'm going to keep you all happy, get rid of some and keep some. Because the plan is now, this back shutter, we're going to remove because you're not really going to see much of it. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount the spare wheel at the back here on a bracket so you're not going to see any of the bottom. And then at the top here, we're going to have a really big opening window there. So we're going to sheet that up, but I've got a little trick for you when you cut and sheet metal. So ideally, what you need is you need a big metal guillotine for the workshop. In your dreams, Johnny boy. But I've asked the old grumpy general and she's not having it. Where would you put it? We'll send her off on another jolly and I'll extend the workshop and tuck it in there, I reckon. <laughs> That's not going to happen. But anyways, when we're cutting sheet steel, I never like to do it freehand because I always find you wander off and you never get it straight. So what I like to do is get a straight, strong bit of steel, clamp it to the workpiece and use that as a guide and just run up and down it. So 
So it all fits, but if you look here, the door comes up square and then it comes off at an angle at the top there. So what I need to do is I need to fold it at this mark here, but I haven't got a big enough folder. So what I'm gonna do is get the straight edge again, clamp it to where the marks are, and I'm gonna score it all the way along. I don't wanna cut through it, I would literally just wanna mark the workpiece. And the mark I've put in it, I've lined up with the edge of my bench here and then clamped it down with a big bit of metal and then I'm just gonna push down on it to fold it. Now, if I didn't put that little nick in it, it'd probably just bow it as a, like a, a round shape rather than trying to give it a nice clean finish. And I know it's still not gonna be perfect, but it's the best I can do with what I've got anyway. So I'm really happy with how that's come out. So all I've got to do now is cut the window out the top and then tack some strips down the side so I can fix it into the side and also tack one across the middle just to give it some rigidity. What do you think of my window? Now, I know you might be thinking, why haven't you done it a little bit bigger? But there's two reasons really. First is this spare wheel is gonna to have to come up just a little bit more so you can get to the tow bar. If you come inside, I'll show you the other. So by the time we get the window surround on here, this is gonna be just shy of 900 mil, which is exactly the height of your kitchen worktop. So if we decided to put the kitchen across the back here, that would work out perfectly. It's also perfect for sitting here, obviously looking out and seeing the view, and it lets loads of light in. And the reason we've done that is we have absolutely no idea what the internal layout is going to look like at the moment, if we're honest. We've had so many different ideas and I don't think we'll really be able to pin it down until we get the rooftop on. So that's why we wanted to do it like this and leave our options open. Well, I've got no words apart from welcome to England in summer. I think that's going to put a stop to prep for today, but I'm going to go and get myself a slightly warmer shower. And I've also had a parcel delivered that will cheer me right up. Now it's time for my favourite part of the day, dinner. You guys all know how much I love my food and that's why I'm so excited to introduce the sponsor of this week's video, HelloFresh. So HelloFresh is a recipe box delivery service and the way it works is you choose what meals you want, how many meals you want and for how many people. And then they'll send out the fresh ingredients perfectly portioned along with these easy to use recipe cards direct to your door. So I find when we're busy like we are at the moment, I end up just eating the same old thing. Whereas HelloFresh offers me over a hundred different recipes to choose from every month. So this week we've got Indonesian style pork noodles, pesto crusted lamb steaks with roast potatoes, and tonight we've got sticky bang bang style chicken. Not only do they sound delicious, but they're healthy and they're quick and easy to make too, which leaves me more time to work on Big Red. HelloFresh also offer flexible plans, so you can skip weeks, you can cancel at any time, you can increase or decrease your portion sizes and the number of meals you get in a week. So for example, if you want to have some friends over for dinner, all you have to do is add two extra portions to your meal for that night. They've also got an amazing offer on at the minute where you get 60% off your first box and 20% off for the next two months. And best of all, free desserts for life. My favourite. So all you have to do is use the code TRUEBLUE60. I'll put a link in the description or you can scan the QR code. Well that was delicious. And now it's time for dessert. But there's only two, so I don't know what John's having. Good morning everyone. So first job of the day today is we need to sort this roof because there's more holes in it than I know what to do with. So we need to seal all them up. And also I'm gonna fit a roof rack to the roof. So. There's a support at the back here which I can mount to, but when you put some weight on the front of the roof, it's quite flimsy, there's no real strong points on it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one of these struts that we've cut off the back, and then I'm just gonna put the strut at the front so then I can mount the roof rack to it. And Jess's activity is to get sand in, which she's most excited with. <laughs> Well this is the job that never ends and poor old Big Red is looking a big old mess but I've gone around with my 180 grit and I've smoothed out all of the big scrapes and dings and dents and things and kind of tried to blend them in 
So now I'm down to the 320 and I gotta go round and smooth her off and key her up. Time for a pause from the sanding. We've had a little delivery. Well, I tell you what, I'm a bit tired after that. See, not just John with the dad jokes. Now we've got it all clean and we're on with filling the holes in the roof. Now there's no easy way of doing this and it looks a bit crude, but it's probably the best way to do it. So we've gone for the old faithful, the pot rivet. We've gone for the big headed ones and then we've just put in a bit of Sikaflex on the inside of it, putting it through the hole, then a bit of Sikaflex on the inside, a washer, and then when the pot rivet pulls tight, it seals it all up. It doesn't look the prettiest on the outside, but you won't see any of it anyway, because the roof racks go in there. Now we've had quite a few of you message us about the YouTube channel, The Outfit, which we've mentioned before when we was in Morocco, when they started their Volvo 6x6 build, and they're doing a good job. But I've got a bone to pick with them, because they're stepping on our turf. Let me get a boss. Now one half of The Outfit is a bloke called Chris. He's a bit of a unit, he's got some big guns on him, and the weather's been changing in Sweden, so he's been getting them out lately. But I'm here to tell you, there's only one set of guns on this continent. Show them, Jeff, show them. Flex. Flex. I'm flexing. And as for you, Ange, you might be a smoking hot mama, but there is only one bikini babe this side of the world, and it, my friend, is my Johnny boy. You give the people what they want, sugar tits. You go put my bikini on. The red one? The red one. So I do recommend going and watching their build. But don't expect this kind of hotness. Now we did have somebody message us last week saying they were unsubscribing because I got my ass out. And it's kind of good that it did really, because as you might have noticed, it happens quite a lot. Well, good morning. I have good news and bad news for you this morning. Good news is it's sunny. Bad news is it's bloody windy. So that means we can't go up painting just yet. So we're gonna get her all taped up and cross our fingers and toes because it's supposed to die off this afternoon. And when it does, it'll be on like Donkey Kong. <laughs> Well, Jess has had a brilliant idea this morning. Because we've got to tape up all along the bottom so we don't get overspray on the Schultz and everything like that, rather than tape it to it, because that'll just blow off in the wind, we're using really strong magnets to magnet to the chassis and the body. Works a treat, look. In fact, come in here, Jess. Come in here. I'd like to ask who you're calling old. Pat on the back for a start and give them a wink. It's a two-in-one video, that is. Grapes in hand, looking up. Well, as you can see, it's still breezy and we're having to hold off with painting because I don't really want a red house. But what it does mean is we've managed to get all of the edges primed up for the panel that's going in here. So we can get that in and sealed and fixed. So when we do paint, we can do it all in one go. Uh, 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 uh. Don't tell him that this is a little beauty. Don't know why we didn't get one sooner. So whilst that's drying, I thought it's about time for another triple T. So this week I'm gonna to talk to you about the old metal lathe. Now firstly, I'll tell you how much I paid for this little beauty. A big fat zero, because I found it in the skip. Where I used to work, there was, a, there was no guard on here, so health and safety says we can't use it. So rather than get a new guard, they loved it in the skip. So I was straight in there. And I have to say, I'm a self-confessed bin connoisseur. I love bins. Anytime I see a bin, I'm looking in it because normally there's loads of goodies in it. In fact, let me show you some of the goodies I've got through the years. A six foot spirit level. Now the bubble was missing out the middle. 80 pence off of eBay. Jobs are good. Un. Tool bags. They're a little bit worn on the edges, but no problem. A beauty set of aluminium ladders. A bin from the bin. 
and a bench grinder. Now, I could go on for ages, but my personal favourite is also one of Jess's favourites. Now, this is actually one of John's bizarre obsessions I can get on board with, because I've even decorated my house with some of the vintage farm tools he found in the bin. Now, what I use this for the most is making spacers and adapters up, and you will have seen me use it when we mounted the table to the back door of the Defender. I made some little spacers up so it can mount to it, and then also when we did the Sainsbury's van and I made the hair dryer for the night heater, I made a little adapter up to go between the two pipes. So the way it works is you just mount your workpiece into the chuck of the lathe, turn your motor on and it spins it round. And then with all the different tooling you've got, you can do loads of different things. So you can round the edges, you can shave a little bit off, you can even bore out the centre of it as well. So one thing I used to make quite a lot was these paddock stand bobbins. And I really enjoy using the lathe because it's quite therapeutic because there's something about seeing the material come off in the curling way that it does that's quite satisfying. So it's one of those tools you don't use very often, but when you do, it's worth its weight in gold. So you know what I'm going to say, don't you? In fact, I'm not even going to say it. Brilliant little bit kit for the workshop. Well, the time has come. Now, I'm always nervous before we start spray painting because whether your gun's going to work, whether you've got it set up right and everything like that. So wish us luck. At least he's looking dashing anyway. She's big, she's red. She's really red. <laughs> I don't know what to say really, I'm lost for words. Absolutely brilliant it went. So like I say, I'm always nervous when we're doing this because we're not painters, you know what I mean? And, and you spend so long prepping it and trying to get it ready and it's just like so intense that bit where you're doing it. That's yeah. why we didn't talk to you, running, sorry. Yeah, running around manic, like Jess was hosing everything down while we were spraying. Mixing but... more paint and... She looks a beauty. She does. But we realised we got way too excited and we didn't actually tell you that she's the original colour that she was because John found on the chassis the original RAL code. Yeah, so she's RAL 9000, I think, So, yeah, which, which is, is uh, quite good because then any bits that we miss inside and that at least it'll colour match yeah. as well. And appropriately, it's called Flame Red. So She's flaming. <laughs> flaming hot. <laughs> well, the good news is the paint didn't fall off overnight anyway. I could not be happier with how this has turned out. We are absolutely buzzing with the finish. And my little trick with the old magnet works treat as well, there was only one tiny little bit of overspray, so we've just touched that back up with the shuts. And thank you for the correction in the comments. It is shuts. You can even see it on the tin. God only knows why I call it Schultz. And actually, fun fact for you, that means protection in German. So there you go. But I need to tell you about the paint. So we used Ultramax 31, which is a 2K paint. So you mix in your hardener and your thinners before you spray it. Um, it says on the website that you don't need any special painting skills, so perfect for us. And you don't need to prime, it just goes to bare metal. Um, and like I say, it's the primer and colour in one. It's also really hard wearing, so they use it to paint lots of tractors and even skip bins and things. So perfect for the places we're going to be taking old big red. So that's pretty much the end of the work this week because believe it or not, we've got to do more paint prep because we've got to prep all the brackets, the bumpers, the fuel tank and everything like that for us to wrap the bracket. But before we go, I wanted to tell you about some more ideas we've been having. 
So underneath these arches here, there's a lot of dead space, and there's a company called SGB All Terrain, another Pinsgauer specialist, and the bloke Gregor who owns it has come up with a brilliant idea where he's put a locker at the back of this rear quarter here, and then also a locker in the middle here between the two wheels, which is a brilliant idea. So I'm going to steal his idea and put my little twist on it, because hopefully we're going to use all the aluminium that we took off the roof to make the lockers with. And I've got an update for you on the sides. So the driver's side is going to stay the same as we'd said, where it's going to have the roller shutter that will be sealed up because that whole back wall is going to be one massive cupboard. But this side, we've got exciting plans for. So we're still going to use the roller shutters and they'll be attached to it because it is something we're quite passionate about, is trying to keep as many original things in this and just reuse as many things as we can. But this is going to be like a gull wing safari hatch type doodah. So this whole side will open up and it will act as a bit of an awning and also you'll be able to like get in and out through here, maybe lay on the bed, be amazing. And Nick, an absolute legend, has one on his. So he sent us loads of information about it that we're going to use to make ours. And then you already know about the spare wheel that's going on here, but this side we're going to put a diesel jerry can and then this side we're going to put a water jerry can. We're going to put the steps back on and I'm hoping to try and reuse this shutter to make an outdoor table. I also want to make an indoor table with it, but Jess isn't so keen at the minute, so we'll see how it comes up anyway. And for the last one, I need your help, because we salvaged this, which is the old water filler point, off of the big tank that was in the back. And I really want to reuse it somewhere and put it pride of place in it. I don't know whether to put it outside or inside, but it can't be reused as the new water filler point because it's seized and I've already damaged it a little bit trying to get it open. So if you've got any ideas of where she could go, please do hit us up in the comments. And that's all for this week. So we'll look forward to seeing you next week where we're going to do some more painting and hopefully start putting it back together again. Oh, I should have done it like this and that. I've been getting all of the flaky pastry. I don't know what I'm saying. Go again, go again, go again. Come on! <laughs> Come on! <laughs> right, I'm doing that. You have, to, you have to fully pose if you are like this. A slightly warmer shower. How the f is I going to finish it? A slightly warmer shower. And what the f was it? <laughs> I think that puts. I think that puts. Oh, hell. I knew you weren't going to remember it. <laughs> I'm a Jesus. <laughs>